Okay. If you don't have any questions, so let me move on. Um, I'll, today I will show you um, the alternative way to get uh, the formulation for uh, problems in linear elasticity. Uh, last time I showed you the general formulation that um, we shoot all the field quantities, the unknown field quantities as the key unknown, right? Uh, we shoot the displacement field, straight field and strain field as the key unknowns. And then we formulate the problem, okay, in terms of um, all unknowns, the governing equation that I show you. So you can see that um, we have uh, 15 equations to deal with. And also we have to, um, you know, to uh, get all 15 um, unknown functions in the formulation. So um, as I mentioned to you before, um, that formulation may be okay in, in, in terms of the concept, but uh, in practice, it's not easy to deal with that formulation because if you would like to get all the unknown quantities, you need to solve a big system of equation. Okay. Um, today I will I will try to reformulate the problem again um, by uh, choosing uh, different sets of key unknowns. Okay, with the hope that uh, the new formulation will um, be better or uh, simpler in some sense uh, when we we try to to solve the problem. Okay, so um, I ask you to review the material on uh, Navier equations and also Beltrami Michel equation that you learned from the first part. Okay, I hope that okay, you, you can remember um, the basic concept of those two sets of equations. Okay, uh, let's first look at the Navier equations. So let's, let's say that we have a body. Um, let's show you here. Okay, we have a body and this body is subjected to um, all prescribed data, like, okay, we have the remote force or the con contact force or, or the traction applied on the battery. And also we have the body force inside, okay? And the body here is restrained, again, the movement um, at some part of the battery. And we know the displacement um, at those points. Okay, I, I use the, the symbol U0 here to uh, represent the known displacement and I use T0 to represent the prescribed traction, okay? Um, what is Navier equation? How can we get that equation? This should be um, sim simple, right? So basically the Navier equation is what? Is what? is simply the equilibrium in terms of the displacement, right? Um, the original equilibrium equation is uh, expressed in terms of stress, right? So um, equilibrium condition is simply the condition that ensure the conservation of uh, linear momentum, right? So so we, we, we finally come up with the equation sigma i j um, comma j plus b i equal to zero. So that's what we, we call equilibrium equations. But um, here we try to uh, reformulate that equation again and try to express um, in terms of the displacement field, okay? Um, how can we get that? So we start with the, the field equations, okay? If you remember, we have equilibrium equation, right? This is the original form of equilibrium equation. And we have strain displacement relationship um, for the linearized case. So strain is related to the displacement field via the linear, linear relation like this. Okay. And we have um, stress strain relationship. This is for uh, general linear material. So CIJKL here um, can be specialized to several cases, for example. Uh, if we have monoclinic material, we have autotropic material, we have cubic material, or uh, transverse isotropic material, or even for the simplest case, 
for the isotropic material. So um, ZITKL here can be um, specialized to, you know, to um, those kind of cases. And the number of independent um, constant can be reduced uh, depending on, you know, the symmetry of the material that we have here, okay? So here I just simply um, express stress-stress relationship in a general way, okay? We, um, um, we, we realize that this one, depending on, you know, um, the, the material that we, we focus on for this particular case, okay? Um, to get equation one in terms of the displacement field. So what we can do here, we just simply uh, start by uh, plugging in epsilon ij into epsilon ij in terms of the displacement field into um, stress strain relationship. Okay, I plug in epsilon ij from equation two uh, into equation three. So, okay, what, what I have is like this. Okay, so this is very simple. Uh, I just simply change the index ij to k now. So, so now you can get sigma ij in terms of um, the displacement field like this. And then we can simplify uh, the term a bit here by simply, uh, we just simply um, expand the term that we have here. Okay, so um, this is just simply the expansion of, of, of the term that we have using the property that, that you know, in this basic mathematics. And then um, if we look at, <clears throat> sorry, uh, if we look at this product or the linear combination here, um, we can see that we have um, K and L are dummy indices, right? So um, you, you learn from the first part, right? We can change the name of the dummy indices without changing the meaning of the term, right? Because um, dummy indices just simply imply what? Summation, right? Summation over the range of the index. Okay, so here we have um, K and L uh, dummy indices, right? So now I can change the name. Let's say that okay, I change K to L and L to K. That will not change any meaning of that term. That's simply the, the property of um, dummy indices. So I, I do in that way. So <clears throat> the first term, I keep the first term the same. But the second term, I just simply change the name of the dummy indices. I switch the name. I change K to L and L to K. And you know that we have the summation over those two uh, indices. So changing or switching the name uh, will not change uh, the meaning of the term. Is that clear to you? Now I, um, I recognize, I recognize that um, CIJLK um, can be, um, change to um, CIJKL. You know that CIJKL have the symmetric property. If you remember, we can switch um, the, the first two indices and the last two as well. And also we can switch uh, the, the two pair. So that's the property that we know for, for CIJKL. And for this case, I will um, switch the indices, the, the last two indices, okay? So this becomes this, right? So I, I, I write out um, the second term again, instead of having CIJLK, we have CIJKL, okay? So I, I just simply uh, employed symmetry of uh, this fourth order tensor, okay? Now, I mean, when you look at the first and the second term, they are identical. So now I can combine them like this, okay? So uh, you can see that um, the expression that we got here is quite simpler, you know, than the one that we have here, right? So we just simply, we just simply use the symmetry of, of CIJKL. So now we can simplify um, the term that we got here and like this. So now we, we got what we want. Right, uh, we we get what um, stress 
in terms of the displacement field. Okay, so if you look at the formula that we got here, you can see that uh, we don't need to compute strain directly if we want to get stress, if you know the displacement field. So this formula allows you to get stress directly by uh, plugging in the displacement field, okay? So this is what I call stress in terms of the displacement, okay? So I can, I can say that uh, this relationship is a combination of equation two and three, right? So you combine two and three. So now uh, you don't need to compute strain directly. You can get stress, okay? I call this equation four. Now I am ready to formulate um, equilibrium equation in terms of the displacement field. Um, I can combine equation one and equation four, right? You plug in uh, equation four, plug in sigma i j that you got from equation four um, back into equation one, okay? So in this case, you, 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 you get uh, equation like this, okay? I didn't do anything else except, you know, plug in sigma i j into that equation. Okay, so um, this is what we call Navier equation. Okay, this is Navier equation for uh, linear material. Okay, I think uh, you learn this uh, equation at least for the special case of isotropic material before, right? With um, Dr. Tiropong. Okay, so so if if you look um, closely to the, the way that I I got this equation is. It's quite simple, right? You just simply plug in, or you you can say you can say that you try to get rid of um, strain um, uh, from from the equation strain and stress from equation one, right? So finally, um, we can check equilibrium of the body whenever we know the displacement field. We just simply plug in the displacement field into this equation and verify that. So if this equation is satisfied, now we can say that um, the body is in equilibrium. Okay. I can say that the Navier equation here is the governing equation for the displacement field. Okay, the displacement field um, can be the solution of the problem if this equation is satisfied. Okay, so if this equation uh, is not satisfied, now we can say that the displacement, uh, the one that you plug it in here, uh, is it's not the solution. It cannot be the solution, okay? It can be the solution if this equation is satisfying, okay? Now, I also need to express the body condition. If you remember, um, you can see that for this problem, we have two types of the body conditions. Um, on, on the surface SU here, we know the displacement directly. So, so checking the body condition on that part it's very simple because we just simply compare the displacement that we have and the one that prescribed here. If they are the same for point on the surface SU, we can say that the boundary condition is satisfying. But uh, for, for this part, for the surface ST, we don't know the displacement, but we know the traction. In this particular case, if, um, if we are given displacement field, how can we check this body condition directly? We cannot do that if we don't have the, the equation that I, 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 I try to get here because uh, to check the body condition here, you need to know stress. How can we get stress? We can get strain first. And, and strain, how can we get strain? We can get from the displacement field. So you have to do several steps because before you can check the body condition on, on that surface. So one way that we can do we can employ equation four here because equation four gave you the shortcut to get stress without computing strain because this allow you to get stress in terms of uh, the displacement field, right? So now I can use this um, equation in combination with what? Uh, Quasi formula, right? You, you, you have Quasi formula, you have a uh, relationship between traction appearing on the surface uh, you know, it you know in in terms of stress components. So you have the product between 
stress and normal vectors. So you get traction. So now I can plug in stress in terms of the displacement field that I, I got from equation four. I plug it in here. Okay. So now I get this uh, relationship. If you look at this one carefully, you can see that this allow you uh, to get um, traction in terms of the displacement directly. So now if I give you the displacement field, I can check the boundary condition on the surface ST easily by simply plugging the displacement, okay, uh, in, 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 into this formula. So now I get the traction due to that displacement field. And I then I compare that one with T0 at point on the surface ST. If they are the same, now I can say that the boundary condition on the surface ST is satisfying. Okay. So this is what I, I try to get. Okay. I try to express all um, quantities in terms of the displacement field. Okay. Do you have any question about anything here? No. Okay. So let, let me um, look at the special case. Um, if we have isotropic material, let's say that, okay, um, the problem that we focus on here, um, the body here is made of isotropic materials. So in that case, um, CIJKL that, that we deal with has very special form, right? Because for isotropic materials, we have only two uh, independent material constants. So... Uh, let's say that, okay, we express CIJKL for that special class of material in this form. You, you should be familiar with this, right? Uh, Chan Hyo Pong, uh, I, I think he um, mentioned about this formula for the special case, right? So this is the, the fourth order tensor for isotropic case. And mu and lambda here are simply um, Lamy constant, okay? Um, you can plug this thing in, in this equation, because uh, the one that I have here uh, is, this is a general stress strain relationship for a linear material. I plug this thing in here. Now I get this relationship, okay? I get stress in terms of strain for the isotropic case. Be careful about, about the formula here, okay? This one apply only for isotropic case. You can see that the equation that we got here simply involves um, two constants, mu and lambda. You cannot, you cannot apply this equation um, to um, an isotropic material, okay? But this one is more general, okay? This equation apply for any, any class of linear material. Okay, any kind of anisotropic materials can be, we can, we can use this equation. Okay, or I can say that this one is simply the special case of that one, okay? Now, um, we can also get stress in terms of the displacement field for this special case. So I just simply use um, the special formula for CIJKL, so now I can get sigma ij in terms of the displacement field as well. Uh, this, this relationship is not different from uh, equation four that I showed you before. It's the same. The only difference is um, we chain um, cijkl into, um, you know, uh, the case of isotropic material, okay? Also for the traction, I can also express traction in terms of the displacement field. I just simply multiply uh, sigma ij here by nj. Now I can get traction in terms of the displacement field like that. Uh, I can say that whenever I know the displacement, I can generate the traction using this formula, okay? Now the Navier equation for this special case take this particular form. Okay, I, I plug in again CIJKL in terms of Lamy constant. So, so now I get Navier equation for this special case like this. Okay, so uh, the comma that I, I, I use here simply represents what? Derivative with respect to, to, the in the, uh, to, to the coordinate. For example, uh, if we have the comma J, 
it's uh, imply that we have derivative with respect to x j okay um for the general for the general isotropic material case here um mu and lambda can be function of um position okay or what i would like to say here um the material even though it isotropic is isotropic but it can be non homogeneous Okay, you have to you have to be able to distinguish between um, isotropic and homogeneous. Okay, isotropic imply the direction independent, but homogeneous imply the spatial uh, independent. Okay, so so if we have a homogeneous material, now we can say that mu and lambda are constant. Okay, if mu and lambda are constant. Now you can pull them out of the, the, the you know, the, the derivative here. So I, I don't need to take derivative of mu and lambda. So I can, I can take it out from, from, from the parentheses here, right? So finally, we get the spatial form for the isotropic case um, with homogeneous material, okay? So if we have isotropic, we have homogeneous isotropic material, maybe equation can be simplified to, uh, the one that I got here, okay, the last one here, okay. Up to this point, do you have any question about anything? Oh, okay. So now I am ready to uh, formulate the problem in terms of the displacement. We get all we need here, okay. So now I, I will. I will show you how to formulate the problem, the same problem here again, in terms of the displacement, okay? Before, for the option one that I showed you last time, uh, we formulate the problem using all field quantities. We formulate the problem in terms of displacement, strain, and stress. But here, we, we, we try to formulate the problem, the same problem, but in different way, okay? So I'll, I will shoot the displacement U, as the key unknown, only the displacement field, okay? With the hope that um, if, if we formulate in this way, we have to deal with less unknowns and you know, less number of equations, okay? So how can we, how can we uh, get the formulation if, if we pick only the displacement U um, as the key unknown? So now we know that uh, you have to satisfy some equations, right? You can be a solution of the problem if it satisfies navy equation like I, I told you before, right? Because uh, to satisfy all, all field equations, um, we just simply combine them together, right? So, so finally, we know that, okay, if a uh, displacement, if the given displacement um, is a solution of the problem, it has to satisfy uh, navy equation, right? Okay, so now I know the governing equation. So I, I should be able to formulate the, the boundary value problem. Okay, this is what I got. So I, I, I want to find the displacement field U. Okay, you can see that this, this is different from the previous statement because we just simply, uh, uh, we just simply uh, determine um, the displacement U, right? Okay, this is the only, unknown that we have here for this for this formulation. So I don't care about strain and strain at this point, okay? So U is the key unknown for, uh, you know, for this problem, okay? And we need to get the governing equation. Like I told you, the displacement have to, have to satisfy um, the AV equation, right? So I need to get the displacement U that satisfy that equation, okay? This have to be satisfied for every point X inside the body, right? Okay. And also, we have to satisfy boundary conditions. We have two part of the boundary condition. We have to satisfy both, okay? So the displacement have to satisfy the essential body condition. This is very easy to check because we just simply compare U and U0. So we need to make sure that U and U0 are the same. 
for every point x on the surface S u. Okay. How about the surface S t? How can we how can we um, check that condition? We need to make sure that that uh, condition is satisfied at every point x on the surface S t. And we know before, okay, on that surface, the traction have to be equal to T zero. The traction is generated by stress have to be identical to um, T zero. But stress is not the key unknown for this formulation because we pick only the displacement as the key unknown. So if someone just simply um, express um, this binary condition like this, that is not appropriate because stress um, doesn't appear as the key unknown for this problem. You know what I mean, right? So for the for the option one, I simply express the binary condition like this because stress is one of the key unknown, right? But in this case, we have only the displacement field as the key unknown, right? So expressing um, traction boundary condition in this way is not appropriate, okay? I need to, <clears throat> sorry, I need to express this one in terms of the displacement field, okay? So I did that for you already. If you go back to look at uh, the previous uh, slide, okay? We have the expression of sigma ij in terms of the displacement field. So I can do that, replace, Sigma ij in terms of the displacement field. Now I can get um, the boundary condition here in terms of the displacement field. So th this is what we got. Okay, I I satisfy the traction boundary condition like this. Okay, or we need to put or express the traction boundary condition or or the natural boundary condition in terms of the displacement field. So this is what I use, okay, if you go back and take a look, this is what I call traction in terms of the displacement field. So now you understand why I have to get that, that formula before we, we formulate the problem, formulate the boundary value problem here. Okay, so this is the, uh, the final form of the boundary value problem in terms of the displacement field. You can see that um, the governing equation that we have to deal with and also the boundary condition all of them are expressed in terms of the displacement alone, right? Okay, we done here. And if you take a look at uh, the information that we have for this for this form for for this case, um, what I um, emphasize here by the dash box just simply indicate the geo, uh, indicate the data that the prescribed data of the problem, okay? We have to be very specific to the problem. For example, um, this um, formulation is complete whenever you tell people all the data that I, I emphasize here. So that's the, the known data of the problem of interest, okay? You need to know B, what B is, okay? You need to know Omega and, and the surface SU and ST. You need to know the prescribed uh, displacement u zero. You need to know the, 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 you, know, the you need to to know the traction t zero. You need to know the material property c i j k l. The, those kind of data, okay, have to be specific to the problem of interest. Okay. <clears throat> now, if you take a look at um, the final formulation that we got here, so you can see that that um, there are only three uh, unknown functions, right? We have only the displacement appear um, in 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 the formulation. So so we have three components for the three D case, right? For the general three dimensional problem. So we have U one, U two, and U three are the key unknowns. So each component we can think about them as you know one function, right? Each component is one function. Each fun one function, right? So we have three unknown functions. So or I can say that we deal only with three unknowns instead of 15 unknown as what as we have to do for, for the option one, okay? Um, if you count the number of equation that we have to deal with here, 
Okay, the governing equation is, is what I um, emphasize here, right? So if you, if you investigate this equation carefully, you can see that um, the first term, you have several indices, but the only one that, that, that is free index, right? And I here is the free index, the list, just simply the dummy indices, right? So we have only one free index. So now we can we, we can see that we have only three equations appearing there, right? Um, so we have to deal with three equations instead of um, 15 um, equations like the previous case, okay? And the equation that we have to deal with here is second order linear partial differential equations. Um, it's second order because you can see that it involves uh, two derivatives here, right? You have the derivative inside here and you have one more here, okay? So um, if you go back and look at option one, um, in that case, the, the partial differential equation that we have to deal with is simply third order. We have only a uh, third derivative in each equation, right? But here is a little bit different. We have second order partial differential equations. So I can say that the equation look a little bit more complicated for this particular case, but we have much less number of equations to deal with, okay? We have only three instead of 15 as before, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, you may have, you may have question like, okay, if you take displacement as a key unknown, how about the, the remaining few quantities? Strain is also unknown. This uh, stress is also unknown. But if we formulate the problem like this, we get only the displacement field. It's not the same as the option one that I mentioned to you before. In that case, when you solve um, the problem, you solve the equation, you solve the system of 15 equations, you get all you want, right? You, you, you get displacement field, you can get strain field, you can get stress field, yeah. But in this case, because we choose to uh, formulate the problem in terms of the displacement field. When we solve the problem, we get only the displacement field. How can we get the remaining fields? How can we get that? We can, we can perform the post process without solving equation. Okay, so once you get the displacement field, you can post process to get strain easily by simply plugging in without solving equation, right? Because we, we know the strain in terms of the displacement field, so we just simply plug in displacement here, okay, in that formula, right? Without solving problem, right? So we just simply plugging in. We plug, we plug in displacement field that we got from solving this um, body value problem, okay? We can get strain. When we get strain, we can go to uh, strain, strain relationship, right? We can plug in strain there, or we can plug in displacement there as well because we can write down stress in terms of the displacement field like what I show you here, okay? You plug in displacement that you solve into that relationship, you can get stress directly, okay? So, so you don't need to worry about the remaining fields. You just simply perform the post process. You can get all the fields you need, okay? Do you have any question about anything here? Be done with option two, right? Okay, now, if you have the special case like isotropic materials, how can I change the formulation that I got above? You don't need to change the form, but you have to be specific for CIJKL, right? So if the material is isotropic, now you can change um, the equation here to be appropriate, right? You can change this to the one for the isotropic case. I, sh I, gave, I gave you that uh, Navy equation, right? For the special case, you can go back and look at the previous slide. Also that part, I have the formula for isotropic case. You just simply replace the two that I, I cir cir circle here uh, with the one for isotropic material, okay? You done here? Now we have two types 
of the formulation one with all unknowns. Um, we, we, we took all unknowns as the key unknowns, right? And then the one here, we just shoot the displacement field. Is there any way else that we can get the formulation different, different from what we have here? I will show you one more formulation, okay? If I don't like displacement field, I would like to shoot something else like stress. Let's say what happened if I choose stress um, as the key unknown? How can I formulate the problem? How can I get uh, the governing equation okay, for stress field? Okay, let's take a look. Um, to formulate that, that problem with stress as the key unknown, I need to you know develop the Bill Michel equation first. Okay, you should be familiar with this equation, right? I, I think um, Dr. Tirapong mentioned about this equation somehow in, in, in the first part, right? Is that right? Can anyone here uh, yeah, tell yeah, me? Okay, he, he talked about Bill Michel equation, right? Is that right? Um, Belter Michel equation that I, I mentioned here is a little bit different from the compatibility, uh, the original compatibility conditions. Belter Michel equation is, is some, some kind of uh, compatibility condition, but expressed in different way. Okay, I am not sure that Ajahn Thirapong covered this in, in class or not, but I, I will try to review this for you. Okay. Okay. Um, we look at the, pro the same problem again. Now, I think you should be familiar with the compatibility condition, right? <clears throat> Can anyone here tell me what compatibility condition are? Why do we need that? What are they and why do we need them? Can anyone here tell me? When, when, when do we need these equations? Okay. So if, if you learn from the third part, okay, let, let, let me show you this, this uh, simple uh, relationship first. Okay. Let me write this thing down. You, we, you have um, strain in terms of the displacement field. If I give you the displacement field as a function of x, okay, as a function of the position, can you get strain field? If I give you the displacement field, I give you the displacement vector, can you generate strain field? This is a very simple task, right? If I give you the displacement field, you just simply plug it in here and here, you just simply take the derivative of that displacement field. Now you, you end up with strain field. Okay, Gener generating strain from the displacement is a simple task. But if you want to do it in different way, in the opposite way, if some, someone give you strain field and ask you to get displacement field, that is much more difficult because the process is what? You have to, to deal with solving differential equation, right? Because if, if you want to get strain, sorry, if you want to get displacement from the given strain, okay, you have to plug in strain here, right? The one that, that is given. Now you have to solve this equation to get you. And you know that this is partial differential equations. I will show you later how, how to deal with that task. It's, it's much more difficult compared with uh, getting strain from the displacement field. Okay, that is not the only point that make, make this problem difficult. If you count the unknown, for example, if I give you the strain field, okay, let's say that this one is known. How many equations do we have here? How many equations do we have here? C 
Shit, Azam. Shit. Think uh, Okay. Everyone, um, everyone say that, right? We have nine equations, but only six of them are independent, right? Because we have two free indices, like your friend said. It, we have only six independent. I, I should say that, okay, we have six independent equations. Okay, based on the notation, we have nine equation, right? But, um, you know, some of them are the same, are identical because, because of the formula here, implied symmetry of strain. Okay, so then we have only six independent equation. Now, how, how many unknown do we have here if we know the strain field? Let's say that I, I give you strain. You want to get displacement from this equation. How many unknown do we have? We have only three, right? We have U1, U2, U3, but you have six equations. What happened to this kind of problem? If you have more equations than the number of unknown that, that, that you have to, to solve, what happened? You learn this with uh, Dr. Chatpan, right, in, in math class. I think he should talk about, um, at least for, for the algebraic equation, what happened if you have more uh, equation? What happened? Can you tell me? You can think about the problem, the linear equation, the system of linear equations. Let's say that you have five unknown, but you have 10 equations. What happened? What happened to the system here? There are two possibilities, right? The first one, there's no solution, right? And the second one, the solution can exist. If there is some spatial condition that we post on some of the data there, Right, because in this case, um, we have six independent equations, but we have only three unknown functions. So to ensure that, okay, this equation allow you to get displacement field or the displacement field exist, okay, in this, in you know, uh, exist from the given strain field, this data have to be spatial. This data have to satisfy some spatial condition to ensure that, okay, this equation allow you to get displacement field because you have more equation than the number of equation, uh, the number of unknowns. So, so this, um, now the compatibility condition come into play here, okay? Compatibility condition are simply the condition that ensure the existence of the displacement field for the given strain field, okay? So what I try to say here, um, strain that are given have to satisfy that condition to make sure that, okay, this equation, when you solve, you can get the displacement field. If strain, if the given strain field cannot satisfy that condition. You cannot solve this partial differential equation to get displacement field. Or I can say that there is no solution. There is no displacement field corresponding to the given strain. Okay. Is that clear to you? Is that clear? Yes, yeah, that's right. Okay, um, now we can formulate the compatibility conditions, right? Based on, based on the thing that we need here, we need to make sure that strain um, is, you know, you know strain satisfies some, some additional condition to ensure the existence of the displacement field. Uh, I will not show the proof how to get the compatibility condition, okay? I am not sure that uh, Dr. Tiropong also showed you this in the class before, how to get the compatibility conditions, but it's, it quite, it's quite uh, complicated mathematically. So I will not show you how to come up with that condition, but if, 
if you are interested in in this area, you can get more information from from the textbook, or you can you know look at the material from the website. I think it should be available somewhere. Okay, this is not is this is not the new stuff. So so you can always get that from you know reference. Okay, um, I will show you the general form of strain compatibility conditions. I add the term strain here because this is the original uh, compatibility condition. We express in terms of strain because we want to make sure that the given strain field um, ensure the existence of the displacement. Okay, so strain have to satisfy this condition. This is what we call the compatibility condition. So the original version of the condition are uh, expressed in terms of strain or is the condition that the strain have to satisfy. How many equations do we have here? If you take a look at the, the index, the, all the indices that we have in this equation. So you have three, four free indices. So this gave you 81 equation, right? We have 81 equation, but only six of them are independent, okay? It's, quite a bit difficult to show that why only six are um, independent. I am not sure that um, Dr. Tirapong show you about this. Okay, we have 81 equations, but only six of them are independent. I will not show you here because it will take some time, but I just, you know, try to summarize what you have learned before. Okay, um, I will show you all those six independent out of 81 that are available there, okay? So what I show you down here are explicit um, equation, six equation that are independent, okay? How can we get that? I think you can uh, go back and review the material that uh, Ajahn Tirapong covered in the class in case that he, he didn't um, show you how to come up with all six here. You can, you can read it from the text. Okay, so whenever, whenever we are given strain and you want to get the displacement field, you have to check all six equations here. So strain, when, plug, when, when you plug in here, all six equations here have to be satisfied. If one of them or more than one or all of them are not satisfied, now you can say that the given strain cannot produce the displacement, or I can say that strain are not compatible, or um, there exists no displacement field, okay? Um, if you don't like to express all six equation here um, in, in this way, in an explicit way, there is the other way that we can write out six equations that are all independent. This one is the um, original one, but this one has some problem because I told you we have 81 equations, but not all of them are independent. Even though this is, you know, in principle, this may be, um, you know, the one that people um, commonly express when they talk about compatibility conditions, but when you try to use that one to solve problem, it may not it may not be good because you have to get rid of several equation because they are not independent. So um, if we just simply focus on only on uh, the independent ones, people prefer to express that equation in this form. So you can go back and check. Or you can compare with the six available uh, form here. That one is also the equivalent form. Okay, so we just simply express in a short, you know, a concise way like this. So we just simply take double curves. You know curve operator, right? You learn this from Ajahn Tirapong, right? So this is simply the curve operator. So you take the curl operator of the second order tensor or strain tensor here twice. You take twice, 
of the curl of strain and set that equal to zero. If that one is satisfied, now we can say that strain is compatible. All, all six equations here are satisfied. Go back and, and, and do the check, okay? If you believe me, that is fine. But if you are not sure, you would like to learn more, go back and try and see that, okay, you will see that, okay, all, all three forms here are equivalent, okay? Okay, so if the given strain field satisfy equation star or the equation below here because they are all equivalent. So let's say that okay, equation star is satisfied for the given strain. Now you don't need to worry about the existence of the displacement field. Now, when you know that the displacement exists, how can we get that? Now you can go back to this relationship. For the given strain, so term on the left hand side here is known, right? Okay, that one is known. Okay, so now when you plug this thing in here and you, you found that this equation is satisfied, so now the strain, the given strain here is incompatible. That imply what? In, imply that, okay, this equation has a solution. So now you can solve this partial differential equation to get you. Okay, how to get that, I will show you later. Okay, you have to integrate this equation or, or solve partial differential equation to get you. But you don't need to worry about that, the case that, okay, the solution uh, doesn't exist because strain satisfied star imply that, okay, this equation contain the solutions. Okay, the list is simply how, you know, simply how to get the, the solution, right? That is some, somehow, uh, you know, a difficult part difficult job but anyway you have to do you have to be able to do that i will show you in you know in, in you know in in the next uh lecture or in next two lecture okay how to solve for displacement field one we know the trend okay so this is the way that we check the given strain field okay we know the way how to how to confirm the existence of the displacement field for the given strain okay now, what happened if we don't know strain at the beginning, we know stress, okay? Let's say that you are given strain field. How can, how can we be we, we sure, how, how can we be sure that um, the given strain, the given strain field also produce displacement field? How can, how can we, how can we ensure that, okay, if I give you strain, you can check compatibility in terms of strain, the equation star that I mentioned before. You can just simply plug in strain there. So if that equation is satisfied, now you know that strain is compatible and the displacement exists. Now, if I want to know that, okay, I give you stress, not strain. How can, how can we ensure that the displacement exists? This should be simple, right? Because you know that stress can generate strain using the formula here. I can convert stress to strain using strain strain relationship whenever you know the elastic compliance, the material, right? So I give you the linear material, so I know that uh, the fourth order tensor S, and that is the elastic compliance. So whenever we, we know the elastic compliance, we can convert strain into strain, right? Is that right? When we know strain, we can check compatibility condition easily, right? Because we just simply plug in strain here back into equation star. If equation star is satisfied, now I can say that strain here is compatible, or I can conclude that the given strain here produce strain that compatible and ensure the existence of the displacement field. Okay? You know what I mean, right? But, if you do in this way, you cannot avoid using this relationship to get strain, right? If you want to confirm the existence of the displacement field using this process, you need to use this, this relationship to generate strain because the compatibility 
is expressed in term of strain. Okay. Now, if I would like to um, make the shortcut, let's say that I don't want to generate strain. Is there any way that I can confirm the given strain and the given strain here also generate the displacement field? Or um, the given strain field here confirm the existence of the displacement field without computing strain directly? Okay, so what I try to do here, I will try to um, derive the compatibility condition again in terms of stress, not strain. But I will come, I will come, I will start with the original one, the compatibility condition in terms of strain, and then I try to manipulate somehow to get the equation in terms of stress. Okay. Me move on here. Okay. Um, we know that okay, strain can generate displacement if it satisfy if it satisfies strain compatibility condition, right? So then, if I would like to ensure that the, the given strain also generate a compatible strain field, so I can plug in because strain have to satisfy um, compatibility condition in terms of strain. I can plug strain into that equation. Okay, I can plug in strain component in terms of stress using this relationship. I plug this thing in in equation star, for example. Okay, I will get the equation like this. This is what I got. Okay, by starting from the original um, original compatibility condition for strain, I plug in strain in terms of stress using hook law, right? I plug this thing in. Now I get compatibility condition in terms of stress. Okay, this equation and that equation are equivalent. Okay, they are equivalent. The first one, the original one here, is expressed in terms of strain. But this one expressed in terms of stress. Okay, so the one that I got here, the new one that I, I got here that I put in the in, in the blue um, box here, um, allow you to check stress directly, right? If you would like to know that, okay, the given stress produce the displacement field or not, you just simply plug in stress into this equation. If it's satisfied, now you know that the displacement exists. Okay? Is that is that clear? If you don't like the form like this, if you remember, we have the, the equivalent form for strain compatibility that we express in terms of what? We expect in terms of the double curl, right? Okay, you expect like this. And so this is equal to zero, right? Okay. You can also plug in strain in terms of stress because if you write this thing down, you can say that strain is simply S multiplied by sigma, right? S here is the elastic compliant tensor, okay? So you plug this thing in. So now you can also write down um, the compatibility condition in terms of uh, stress in a concise form as well, like this. Okay. This is equation that equivalent to the one uh, provided in, in the blue box here. You can also write out the compatibility condition in terms of substrate like this. Okay. Okay. Do you have any question about anything here? Um, this condition or the one that I, I just um, gave in terms of the curve here, that one or this one allow you to check the given stress, okay, that 
that confirm the existence of the displacement field. Okay, if the condition here are satisfied, now you know that um, stress that is given can generate strain that is compatible and finally generate the displacement field or the displacement field exists. You can say in that this equation is not satisfying. So now you cannot generate displacement field. Okay. So if you if you think about this, um, if stress satisfy the compatibility condition, now I can generate all fields, right? Because I can start with stress. I check this condition. If this condition is satisfied, now I can start to generate strain. I can start to generate displacement field. So generate strain from strain, I use stress-strain relationship. Generate displacement field from strain, I use strain displacement relationship. So now I can say that whenever, whenever stress satisfy compatibility condition, I can always generate the remaining two fields using the two field equations, using hook law and using strain displacement relationship. Or I can say that all, all three fields that I have here already satisfy two equations, right? Because I generate strain based on this relationship, it satisfy hook law. I generate displacement based on strain displacement relationship, so it satisfy that equation automatically. So now, if you look in that way, if you would like to make sure that stress that satisfy this one, also the solution of this problem, that there is one equation left that you have to check. What is that? Can anyone tell me? I gave you stress here and you check this one. If this one is satisfied, now you, you are sure that you can generate this one. That can be used to get displacement field, okay? So now, whenever stress satisfy that one, you can have all field here. And two equations are satisfied already, right? One of, one of them is this one. And the second one is, is strain displacement relationship because you use them to generate the remaining two fields, right? How can I confirm that this one is a solution of this problem? There's one equation that I have to check. What is that? Stress satisfy this equation is not enough. Stress satisfy this equation just confirm that displacement exists. And this relationship and that relationship can be satisfied. But there is one equation left that you haven't checked. What is that? Equilibrium equation. Yes, equilibrium equation. We need to check equilibrium equation because stress have to satisfy equilibrium equation as well. Because if you remember, we have three basic field equations, right? We have equilibrium equation. We have stress-strain relationship. We have strain-displacement relationship. Um, now, if you generate strain and displacement from the two relationship here, now you can say that the two equations are satisfied automatically via the generation of strain and displacement field. Okay, um, but we haven't checked equilibrium for stress. Okay, so that's why um, we need equilibrium as well. Okay. Now I I know the condition that allow me to get a displacement field. This is the condition that apply for any kind of materials, right? Because I express this in a general form in terms of uh, saturated field, uh, sorry, in terms of elastic compliance, okay? So what I show here is a elastic compliance. This is applied for any class of linear material. What happened if the material is isotropic? Can we simplify the equation that we got here? We can simplify that, okay? We can simplify that uh, because the elastic compliance for the isotropic material should be simpler than, than what we have here, right? Because 
uh, I explain in this way, you know, 